Welcome to the Vibe Within Podcast. I'm your host, Gab Cohen. Each week, we will connect through stories and conversations about wellness, yoga, addictions, spirituality, mental health, rituals, and everything in between. The goal is to transform our traumas into strengths to create the change we desire in our lives. My mission is to help others by shining awareness on real-life topics so we can learn new ways to heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Whatever you are going through in this moment, you are not alone, so let's connect and heal our vibe within but how can I transform resistance release that struggle and harm into calm energy well I will make something Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Gab Cohen. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Uh, the intro song is always by Matt Bellina. The song is called Brand New Brain. I helped him write the lyrics and he composed all the music for it. Uh, let's send Matt some healing, loving energy because He actually just lost his grandmother um, very recently, so uh, if you have the heart space and the energy to send some love his way, some healing, some graceful grieving, send that his way. And today's episode is kind of in that realm of grief, of depression, all those things. So in this episode, I am talking to Kate, who is a nurse practitioner, and she works for My Ketamine Home, which the name of My Ketamine Home, they're actually changing the name of their their business, and I just found that out recently. So in this episode, you will hear us say My Ketamine Home, but they have shifted into a new name, which I believe is... Nue. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm going to link it all in the show notes. And if you're interested in getting ketamine treatments or starting a ketamine treatment at home um, experience for yourself, if you've been dealing with depression that uh, feels like you just you need some kind of intervention that's a little bit more um, in depth or intense, uh, you can check out my ketamine home i think their instagram is still my ketamine home and when you have your consultation over the phone you can mention the uh, my name so my name's gab and if you mention my name they'll give you 20 percent off so yes their instagram is still called my ketamine home all one word and once you have your over the phone consultation which is very short very easy they just like to kind of ask you some questions see where you're at emotionally all the things and just mention gab sent me here to get 20 percent off so uh, before we get into this episode i just wanted to kind of go through a little update um a lot has been going on uh i feel like the end of the summer going into september was intense probably not just for me but for everyone i i've been feeling like physical health physical healing is at the forefront of what a lot of people are dealing with right now especially me um it seemed like at the end of the summer i kind of fucked myself over in this sense of sabotage self-sabotage Uh, self-sabotaging my health so I you know I drank I relapsed on on drugs and I I don't even like the word relapse because I'm not I'm not uh, I don't consider myself 100% sober forever like in in NA or whatever Um, the reason why I don't drink or party or anything is because one doesn't make me happy anymore 
two, it fucks up my body really, really badly, um, especially as someone who's healing Hashimoto's, autoimmune, hypothyroidism. And it's kind of crazy because my body has kind of been a experiment for like the last two years almost. And what I mean by that is, you know, about two years ago, um, I decided, you know what, this is not working. Being on thyroid medicine is not working for me. So I decided to take myself off of it. So this was um, October of 2019. So it really has been uh, two years of me going through phases of being on no medication, seeing how I feel, phases of being on medication, phases of being on only one medication. So it's been a really rough two years for me physically, but I'm glad that I have that I did it because now I have a lot of information based on my own body because everybody's treatment for autoimmune and Hashimoto's and whatever chronic illness you're dealing with, um, it's going to be different for everyone. And September was a really, really rough month for me. I was going through a lot of symptoms that were like debilitating, um, you know, weight constantly either gaining. Usually I'm just like gaining weight for like no reason. Um, that's a side effect of ha- of Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism. So it's been a journey to say the least, finding a doctor who will listen to me, wasting money on functional medicine doctors. I, I wasted $250 on a functional medicine doctor who I was under the impression could uh, prescribe medication. And this woman she, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to talk badly about her, but $250 to have a virtual session and tell me that I should eat seeds and seed cycle and that's going to solve all my problems or I should take, you know, more, more oil or I, I and then she even said, maybe you should eat fish. And I'm, and I'm just like, you know what? You're not listening. I didn't say this, but inside of my, my mind, I was just like, you can't just tell somebody who's vegan, oh, just eat fish. That will make everything better. Um, so I took everything that she said with a grain of salt. I ordered a couple of supplements that she recommended, um, but I wasn't happy with the experience because she couldn't prescribe medication. And at the end of our $250 appointment, she said, you'd be better off finding a nurse practitioner who can prescribe medication, and this is the medication that you should try, which is another thyroid medicine that I haven't been able to try yet. So um, hopefully this is the last straw. I'm you know, finding a doctor, I'm finding a nurse practitioner or a specialist who will actually help me, who will actually look at my labs in depth, who will actually prescribe me the medication that I need. Um, Also, another thing is hormones. You know, hormones are so important, especially as a woman. Um, If your estrogen or your progesterone is off, um, you can gain weight, you can get acne, you can become very fatigued, your digestion can get all fucked up. Um, And it's like, it's crazy because I eat so clean, I eat so healthy. So, there's only so much lifestyle and diet can do is what I'm realizing and that's that's the cold hard truth. I mean, everybody wants to be able to heal without medication, right? Lifestyle and diet. Life, lifestyle and diet. Everybody's always saying these words. But for some people, you can eat as clean as you can. You you can eat all the right things. You can do all the correct movements like for me I had to stop doing cardio and now I just do yoga walking and some light weight lifting and like that's it and the sauna and um for me that's what everybody tells me to do so I'm doing everything that everyone's telling me to do lifestyle and diet focusing on healing my gut blah 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 taking supplements taking herbs doing all these things but for people who are really dealing with a, an imbalance in their endocrine system, which is hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, Hashimoto's, um, sometimes medication is needed. 
because if you don't get on that medication then your body is working and grinding and um, grinding down these 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 working pathways and it's just grinding down your health honestly so for me I am I'm one foot in the holistic realm and I'm one foot in the traditional um, Eastern medicine realm Um, because I know that herbs and supplements help me a lot but I also know that a medication that a lot of people are telling me to go on which is uh, a desiccated thyroid medication um, is what I need to get on so you know advocating for yourself advocating for your health is debilitating it's exhausting it's draining dealing with insurance companies is so stressful Um, so if you're dealing with any health issues I really understand what you're going through because it is just my entire life just it feels like my 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 job it's a full-time job just to try to find a doctor who will order the correct labs a doctor who will listen um, you know finding a doctor who doesn't charge $250 for nothing so you know keep pushing um, I'm actually going to record an episode all about healing Hashimoto's in my experience I'm not a doctor I'm not a practitioner I'm just a person who has literally felt like um, you know my body has been an experiment for two years so there has been a lot of trial and error there has been a lot of learning and you know I know what works for me and so far I kind of know what I need to start getting myself back into which is a certain kind of medicine so it'll be it'll be a recording that I'm going to do soon it's going to be all about healing Hashimoto's and disordered eating which some people are dealing with both some people are dealing with one or the other but they overlap because if you're dealing with Hashimoto's then a lot of foods don't um, agree with your body and if you're dealing with an eating disorder um, also a lot of foods might not agree with your emotional state or your physical body so Hashimoto's and eating disorders are very intertwined a lot of people actually develop eating disorders while they're um, in their treatment of Hashimoto's because it makes people scared of food it makes people afraid to eat things because of the inflammation because of the, the symptoms and the reactions and um, it's it's really crazy and then a lot of people who um, have had eating disorders in their life you know maybe like me for instance I had severe eating disorders um, when I was you know a teen in high school after high school and I believe that those eating disorders triggered my autoimmune issues my gut issues my Hashimoto's and thyroid issues so there you go they're very inter- intertwined so I will be recording that soon. Uh, If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in that episode, you can always reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram is gabloveflow. So uh, without further ado, let's just get right into this episode with Kate, the ketamine nurse from My Ketamine Home. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. I seriously love BetterHelp so much. They're one of my favorite sponsors, and I will tell you why I love them so much. When I started this podcast, I was going through a really rough time. I'm talking drug relapse, drug addiction, drug abuse, relationship issues, anxiety, depression. I was going through one of the craziest moves of my life, so therapy really helped me get through a lot of that and online therapy is in my opinion even better than going to a therapist's office because let's face it our lives have changed the last year or so and I just feel like online therapy is the best way to go. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist and you can start communicating with them in less than 48 hours. They really do match you with with a therapist so quickly. It takes, in my case, less than 24 hours. 
It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And there's a broad range of expertise available, which might not really be locally available in all areas. The service is available for clients worldwide, and it's super easy to access your account. You can log in, you can send a message to your counselor really at any time you want, and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, whatever you prefer. I like to do phone sessions sometimes because sometimes I like to, to go on a walk when I go on, when I do my therapy sessions. It's really up to you. Traditional therapy can come with kind of a stressful energy attached to it. So I really love how BetterHelp is really controlled by the the patient. If you want to connect with your therapist and communicate something with them, they have a journal feature, which I absolutely love. This journal feature has the option of sharing your journal entries with your therapist, but if you want to keep them totally uh, private and anonymous towards yourself, you don't have to share them with your therapist. But I really like this feature because For many of us, starting fresh with a new therapist gives us a lot of anxiety and it can trigger us. Um, So if you feel like that, you're not alone. I felt the same exact way because let's face it, a new therapist has to ask questions and try to get on the same page as where their client is. And sometimes rehashing our our history of trauma and all the details can become kind of exhausting and a little bit annoying. So what I do when I start with a new therapist, like I did on BetterHelp, is I use the journal feature and I wrote kind of a lengthy email explaining to the therapist where what I've been through in the last few years, where I'm at right now, what I'm looking for in therapy, and what kind of therapy I've done, what kind of therapy I'm interested in, and what I'd like um, out of a therapist. So this is super important. If starting with a brand new therapist gives you panic or anxiety or stress, This is the most stress-free approach you could possibly do. I love how they matched me with someone with the experience and qualifications that I asked for. I personally asked for a therapist who had some experience with eating disorders, depression, and relationship trauma. Once BetterHelp matched me with my therapist, she messaged me right away and then I scheduled my first session with her for that week. The process is easy, effortless, and stress-free. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. So if you're going through a hard time right now, and let's face it, so many of us are, whether it's emotional turbulence, depression, anxiety, relationship issues, LGBTQ issues, whatever it is, body image, self-esteem, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash vibe. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Vibe Within listeners, you get 10% off of your first month of online counseling at betterhelp.com slash vibe. That's betterhelp.com slash vibe. Betterhelp.com slash vibe. Go start online therapy. DM me on Instagram. Let me know how it's going. And I hope that you get the help, the support, and the healing that you deserve. So I'm here with Kate from My Ketamine Home. And she is a nurse practitioner. She is the main nurse practitioner at My Ketamine Home. And um, Kate, welcome to the podcast. Thank you Thank for being you. here. How would you Thank explain you. your your job? Because not only are you a DJ and work with energy <laughs> and energy healing, you have such a cool job at My Ketamine Home. So what do you do? Thank, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here with you. Um, 
I would describe it. Okay. So I'm a nurse practitioner. That's my title, obviously. Um, and what I do is I kind of, um, help patients, uh, get to the root of a lot of their anxiety and depression and their trauma and try to help them heal. So basically what I do is I, I help people heal every day. That's the way that I look at it. Um, and just try to support them throughout the process of healing. Um, but the main tool for their healing is the use of ketamine. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, and we will get into more of energy healing and stuff that you do. But um, so we met in our first session, which was uh, like kind of like a mental mental health intake I would say. Right. And I feel like I got like a nice, I I felt a really nice connection with you from the beginning. And I, I feel like there's a lot of ketamine clinics out there right now that, um, first off are a lot more expensive. And secondly, I don't think all of them are doing this like intimate kind of experience where it's like a lot of support, like all the way through. So what are some questions what qualifies someone to be ready to do ketamine treatment for depression? Um, mm-hmm. We'll get into what what ketamine is, but for people who are listening, they're probably mm-hmm. maybe struggling with mental health issues. I mean, a lot of right. people who listen to this podcast have depression, anxiety, eating disorders, whatever. Mm-hmm. So what qualifies someone to, to try this? Um. An openness and a willingness, I would say, first and foremost, um, that's really important. Just being open enough to, to try something different that's not necessarily considered mainstream for the most part. I mean, ketamine is a psychedelic, mm-hmm. um, so they have to, to be open minded enough to, and, and have that willingness to seek out something that's maybe somewhat considered alternative at this point in time. Um and then in addition to that, they have to be relatively healthy for the most part. Um, but other than that, there's no real requirement. I mean, there's people who we see people on, on a continuum, you know, on the, on the spectrum of, of mental health, which is like severely depressed, willing to try anything to feel better, to get relief from their symptoms. And people who have, you know, maybe minor anxiety and some OCD uh just want to kind of do some mind expansion or consciousness expansion type of have that type of experience. And then in addition to that, across the board, what I see is that trauma is a very prevalent in our society, especially right now. Um, a lot of people who may even initially come for or the consult think that they're only looking to treat anxiety. And then, you know, as we have uh, through the course of the conversation and it becomes more intimate, um, really, I end up asking some questions and they kind of convey that, yes, they have indeed experienced trauma like we all have. Most of us have who who are alive on this planet. It's hard to escape. Um, So, yeah, I would say, you know, having an an open attitude towards trying something different. really committing to yourself throughout the process, like being committed to this kind of as a, as a form of self-care because mm-hmm. it does kind of take a lot out of you, the actual experience. You know, you have to really commit to to seeing it through to completion. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably about it. Uh, there's not a lot of limitations. I mean, medically, there's some limitations, but that's a whole other discussion. Right. Yeah, I mean, I can speak from why I felt ready to do ketamine sessions is because I felt like I was at the end of my road with my depression and like it just nothing that I was doing was working and I'm not really against medication but in my life when I was younger like in my teens I was put on like every kind of antidepressant and like I was so young and yeah. I feel like that really messed up my my brain. I mean, not mm-hmm. only was was I going through an eating disorder in high school, but um I was I was put on like all these medications. So yeah. now I'm kind of like I'm I'm like a holistic kind of approach person. I'm not anti medication, but I thought, you know, why not try this? What's what's 
what's it going to do? It's not going to make anything worse. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And our approach here is, is holistic. It is integrative. Um, it is, you know, kind of functional medicine based kind of looking at the root cause. So we look at each client in a comprehensive view, like what are all the factors that may be contributing to how you're feeling, you know, not only limited to mental health, but like diet, your level of activity, um, you know, are you practicing any type of meditation, et cetera? Like we really look at gut health is a big one, uh, inflammation, uh, all those things can affect depression and can exacerbate depression. And so we look at all of those factors and I am in total agreement with you regarding um, how antidepressants are overprescribed a lot of the time um, or prescribed inappropriately, I think. I see a lot of people who are taking Adderall. Um, That's just kind of rampant right now. Like almost everybody's on it. And I'm not saying it doesn't have its place. Of course it does. Um, Mm -hmm. But then those people, those are also a lot of people who experience a lot of anxiety. So, you know, it's kind of like, (laughs) you know, it's kind of like a give and take. So yeah, I do think that, um, You know, our approach is a little different in that it it kind of begs the question, like, what other factors contribute and have contributed to your mental health? And we know that childhood, adverse childhood experiences contribute to anxiety and depression in adulthood. We know that trauma, abuse contributes. And um, SSRIs and SNRIs, you know, they have their role. They're helpful for a lot of people. Um, But then there are also a lot of people who have really bad side effects on them. And what they experience is kind of a numbing of their emotions. And that's very common. I would say that probably near 80% of the clients that we see all discuss the negative side effects and that they don't feel any highs anymore. They're just kind of there. Like flatline. So Right. So like they're functioning in society, like it's got, you know, these meds have gotten them to be able to like get up and go to work every day, but they're not experiencing joy. Mm. It's just really like this numbing and the numbing, just the word numb. I hear that all the time. That's how I felt when I was on all those medications. Right. And people want to feel again. I mean, I had somebody today, honestly, who this is the first time I spoke to her since she completed all six doses. And I remember what she looked and felt like the first time I spoke to her, she was desperate. And she kept saying to me, I just don't want to feel numb anymore. I want to experience joy. I want to like cry if a movie's sad. And I want to laugh when my daughter tells me a joke, you know? And then I see her today and she's like laughing with me. And she's like, I've been going for walks. I've been going out to eat at the restaurants. And she just, wow. Like a totally different person. Was she on antidepressants before? She was, which she has been able to decrease. You know, she and her psychiatrist um, reduced her antidepressant medication by half already. Mm. And she plans on weaning herself off completely. And that's just one example of somebody who really was able to process a lot of trauma, process a lot of grief that she had, process a lot of anxiety and, and, and depression and come out of it on the other side with a different perspective and just really uh, healing. Healing is a word that I always come back to. It really just seems like, you know, it's quite the positive transformation for a lot of people. Yeah. So this kind of, I, I feel like we should get into kind of the nitty gritty of how the ketamine works on depression and anxiety and PTSD mm-hmm. and even small T trauma, big T trauma, whatever, how it works Mm -hmm. on the body and how it works on the mind. Because when people think of the word ketamine or people hear the word ketamine, they can think horse tranquilizer, they can think festival drug, they can think (laughs) cable, whatever. So, and I, I know that was my kind of perspective on it because I've been around the party scene in Philly which is very, very ketamine-based. And I'm sure it's like that in every main city at this point, but it's different. Right. It's not the same. So right. what, what is an experience like? What is the ketamine doing? Walk okay. us through what's <laughs> going on. Okay, so um, there are several what we call the neurobiological benefits of ketamine, and that's what it's actually doing to your brain. 
And then there's the psychedelic component. So I'll talk about the neurobiological benefits first. And that's um, ketamine causes a, a, a glutamate surge, which is um, really helpful. Is provides a robust antidepressant effect for a lot of people. It causes um, NMDA receptor antagonism, which... Uh, is very particularly helpful for people who have a lot of negative intrusive thoughts that's common with PTSD. Um, It increases brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So it kind of causes a new uh, neural network, like synaptogenesis is happening in your brain. And it turns off your default mode network, which is kind of like, you know, that's where we default to when we're anxious and depressed. It's like, where do we default to? Being anxious, right? It's like, oh, your mind's not occupied right now. How about you worry about this instead? Um, so it kind of interrupts that. And so a great analogy would be just that it kind of gives you, there's like a, a, a roadblock and it's giving you a detour. Like now we're going to go in this direction, just like neurologically speaking, we're going to have new wiring here. Mm. So neuroplasticity is a big component of ketamine. Um, But equally as important, I mean, for us, equally as important is the psychedelic experience, right? That's something that is very much a felt experience, which is probably very similar to like um, some somatic experiencing type of therapy. Um, People find it just profoundly healing, profoundly insightful. Um, They may receive visual imagery that's very healing. They may see loved ones that have passed away, Uh, they may receive messages, uh, certain messages that are very healing for them in that space. Um, And as you know, it's something, it's a type of experience that cannot really adequately be put into words. Um, But it's a very experiential type of healing experience where people feel, you know, it's an embodied experience where they're feeling this healing happen. Um, and that component in and of itself can be so transformational for people. They get like a bird's eye view. They look at their lives and maybe they may come away from it thinking, maybe I'm not as anxious as I thought I was, or maybe I don't have to be worried about this or that, or maybe this happened for this reason and I can look at it differently, or maybe I can forgive now. Maybe I'm ready to forgive X, Y, Z you know, the list goes on and on. But so I I would say that the psychedelic experience is so very important. So, and what's interesting and beautiful and wonderful about ketamine is that um, the neurobiological benefits are not dose dependent. They're not dependent on the psychedelic experience. So people still feel relief, even if they can't access a psychedelic state or you know, they can't relax enough to kind of get into that and surrender to that moment. Um, they still get the relief. They still get benefits. They still the next day say, wow, I don't feel as anxious today. And right. I, have, I have more focus and I have my memories better and I'm sharper. So it's really wonderful to see that as well. Right. You know? um, but we do value both. Like yeah. the substance itself, ketamine as a, as a substance or a right. medication, mm-hmm. um, it is a very body physical kind of sensation. So I feel like when it, when it is put into the body and just for everyone wondering, it's not snorted, it's not sniffed in a a (laughs) nasal spray. It's not injected. You're literally putting a dissolvable tab underneath your tongue, which I really like because I just feel like it, I mean, because I'm not going to I'm not going to beat around the bush. I've done ketamine and party scenes before, and I didn't enjoy it at all, actually. Right. I had a very like negative experience with it. So mm-hmm. and I think I told you that in our in our se- in our first session that like right. I was kind of like, uh, like, I'm not sure I'm kind of nervous because I, I actually have some trauma around psychedelics. Right. And that's totally understandable. And that is not uncommon. Right. But it's kind of like, and when people tell me that, I always say, you know, our setting, as we know, set and setting is so important when it comes to psychedelics, but our setting matters, Mm -hmm. right? Like this is, you want to be, you want to feel safe. You want to feel supported. You want to feel like you're in a peaceful environment where you're not going to be interrupted. All those things are so important. So it's like the way that we do something with intention makes a big difference. And so I spend a lot of time talking to people about that. And obviously, you know about 
intention, but you know, a lot of the clients that I speak to, obviously, this is their first time ever hearing anything about intentionality and setting intentions and um, just trying to convey to them the importance of treating this as a sacred experience. Yeah. Yeah, it is sacred. And I feel like, you know, if there's anybody listening, which I, I, I get a lot of DMS from people who are like, yeah, I used to party and now I'm like sober ish, but you know, they're, they're, they still do psychedelics here and there and and they're Mm -hmm. still, they're still healing and they're still, dealing with trauma like and and trauma can come up on a day-to-day basis in different ways we can get triggered in the most like random ways like I could be walking down the street and I could see something that reminds me and takes me back to this weird memory in high school Mm. it's like it's like really we we could be affected at any time tell me about it tell me about it and that's the beautiful thing about ketamine is that it kind of takes you to the places in your subconscious where a lot of trauma has been buried for your protection yeah <laughs> right you've built an armor around it like okay i have to go on with life um it kind of allows you to access those spaces or kind of process those experiences without the emotional charge of yes. the trauma like you're not for for me personally um I have experienced a lot of trauma in my life. And um, when I tried ketamine for the first time, that was the message. That was the experience for me. Like it took me to this traumatic moment, but I didn't feel that that emotional charge of it. I wasn't activated. My, my nervous system wasn't activated. I wasn't in that fight or flight mm-hmm. mode. Um, I was able to view it. Um, and I was, the message that I received in that space was like, this, this was not your fault. Right. This was not your fault. And this is, everything is not your responsibility. And it was just so profound. It was like, it wasn't this long paragraph of, it was just like two sentences, but it just, ah, you know, the way that it, it the way it was delivered for me was, huh, yeah, I, I can't even like, it's hard. It, that's why I'm saying it is kind of hard to put into words, but is it provides a, a deeply profound healing of a lot of the wounding that we carry with us that, you know, you can sit and talk therapy for hours about, but a lot of times we just never even go there. We don't go to some of the deepest, darkest, most horrible things because discussing them Mm -hmm. activates the trauma all over again. And you're re-experiencing that. So for a lot of people, it's understandable why they don't necessarily want to talk and talk and talk about it. And and I'm a huge proponent for therapy. And I wish that every single person that came into my program had a therapist on board. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you obviously have a therapist on board or two. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I love, I love <laughs> therapy, but, um, but uh, I'm just saying like, definitely in terms of trauma and some other things, like, yeah, it, it has to be this somatic, it has to be this profound, deep, innate healing that occurs that allows people to really move forward from it. So. Yeah. What you just explained, I think what what it reminds me of is this undescribable kind of messaging that we get from if anybody's experienced a trip on LSD or mushrooms or whatever, you get these messages, this these clarity bombs of like, oh, like it's everything's fine or this is why this happened. And right. I was right, listening to right. a podcast the other day and she was saying, the lady was saying, you know, the trauma that we experience, we don't have to be in the mindset of everything happens for a reason. We could be in the right. mindset of what, what did I learn from this? What lesson did I learn? You know, you know, what knowledge do I have now? Um, right. As shitty as right. it is, like everybody's trauma is like, it's not like it's not like you came to this earth and like this was just destined to happen to you. Like shit fucking happens, you know? Absolutely. To, to all of us every day. And that's the only change is the only constant. Yeah. Right. And the more we, we cling, the more we cling to our tightness of like, no, I don't want to change and I don't want to grow. You know, like Nietzsche said, um, the snake who can't shed its skin will perish. Right. Like we have to grow. That's, that's why we're here to evolve, to grow. And, I think that innate understanding that life is happening for you, not to you, like it's happening for your growth, for your evolution. If you can kind of surrender to that, Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like this, these things may have been, I know personally for me, I've experienced a lot of crap, you know, for lack of a better word, really a lot of traumatic experiences from childhood to adulthood. Um, but I also feel like, wow, I've gained a lot of wisdom. I know a lot. I can relate to people. I have a lot of empathy. You know, I, I can, it's part of what allows me to connect so well with people. Yeah. You know, so it's like just understanding that, um, you know, not to be reductionist about it and say like, oh, there's always a silver lining, but it's, it really is, it's more complex than that, but it is just kind of seeing things for what they can teach you and how you can grow from them. Yeah. And I think like I have written down here cause you, you made me think, um, about how like safety in the body, like the mm-hmm. ketamine, the ketamine itself provides at least in my experience it it provides a a physical sensation of safety yes like you're laying there your body feels Mm -hmm. safe you might feel a little heavy but you're lying down on your bed you're comfortable like set and setting is there so you don't feel like you're stuck anywhere and 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 also I want to say that it's diff it's a little bit different than let's say LSD because LSD is like, it's almost like your mind is so like sparkly and like anything can trigger it. But when you're on ketamine, you have more control over absolutely like, what you want to think about. Like, like, absolutely. I, yeah. Like, yeah. That's something that I convey to people all the time because a lot of people obviously are scared and anxious coming into this. And some of them have never tried their psychedelic naive. They've never tried psychedelics in their life. Mm-hmm. And even the ones who have, I'm like, look, If you've done LSD and you're having all this visual imagery and you're interacting with your external environment, it's a lot of stimulation. This isn't like that. This is like eye mask on, not a lot of visual imagery um, unless you get into the higher doses. Um, It's more of a felt experience, but it feels like a warm hug. You know, it feels like you're supported. And the, the first time I ever experienced it, I, I equated it to feeling like, like the womb space. Like that's how I felt. I just felt yeah. so held and so loved and so supported in this fluid space where it just was, it was so beautiful, you know, so, so beautiful. And yeah, I think that, you know, what I try to tell people is that if you start to feel nervous in the experience or you start to feel like your 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 mind is going to a place that may be dark or, you know, something that you don't want to deal with, you have the capacity to be like, nah. Yeah let's focus on something else, Yeah, you know? And I mean, I've done that myself and there's two ways to look at that. Obviously for more experience, uh, people, people who've had more experience with psychedelics, you know, they're more prone to like staying curious and open in that space. Like, okay, what does this have to teach me? What can I learn from this? But for people who are starting out and it's their first time experiencing a psychedelic, it's okay for them to be like, you know what? Nah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go that route. Let me lift up my eyewear and reorient myself to this room. Okay, yeah, my sitter's there. I'm good. I'm safe. I'm breathing. I'm fine. Okay, back into this. Right. Room, you you, know? you could change the song. You can stretch your right. body. You you right. literally have the control to just pivot and be like, all right, I'm going to think about something else. I'm going to breathe. So it's it's like this. You still have all of your mental awareness you're not like right. it's not like dmt where you're like blasting off onto another planet you are still right. very in on physical earth you you feel grounded i feel like that's yeah. that's something that really is important to to state with ketamine is that for me um you know finding safety in my body and finding just stability and feeling secure like nothing bad is going to happen. Like, you know, um, I've, I've been working on that in therapy is like this fight or flight, this, this hypervigilance. Hypervigilance. Oh, I've got yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And it's like, um, in, in the ketamine session, I, I didn't know the first one. I didn't know like what I wanted to like really focus on, but some memories and some thoughts and some experiences came up involving, Um, mostly like men that I've dealt with in my life. It's clear to you that de-icing the wings will not be done in a jiffy. You look for phone outlets but see none, only photos of phone outlets. A voice announces your gate is now 39C, 12B, 9A. 
It's like musical chairs, if musical chairs made you sob in the pet relief area. A child picking his nose stares. His parents have abandoned him. The airport will raise him now. Don't let flight delays ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Life because that's like where a lot of my trauma has come from. And mm-hmm. it was same. It was like at the end of the day, at the end of like the, the session, the end of the night, it was like everything's fine almost. Like that was like the message. It sounds so fucking cliche. But I wrote down a bunch of notes yeah, but- on my phone. But it's like, <laughs> right? It, it does. It's crazy. Like when you look at them, it's like, okay, all of this, this, this crazy, like five thousand word, whatever, is like basically saying, it's gonna be okay. All is well. You're safe. Yeah. Like it's time to let go. You know. Right. Right. And so it's one thing for us to know something intellectually, and it's another thing for us to like feel it in our heart space to embody it. Right. Yes. And I think that's what ketamine gives you. It doesn't matter if it's cliche, but if your message is all is well and you feel that all is well, then that's transformational. On a on a physical cellular level. Yeah, on a cellular level. Correct. Because you can cellular. talk about it all day long and you can of course. you can see memes and you can listen yeah. to podcasts. But if yeah. you're not feeling it physically, like in your body, because like your body is what holds on to trauma too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the intrusive thoughts. Uh, you said yeah. something about intrusive thoughts earlier. Mm-hmm. And like, I know that like, okay, so if we're in a ketamine experience, maybe the intrusive thoughts will be able to, to divul- diverge away a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Um, so will the intrusive thoughts be easier to navigate through after you do like, you know, a few ketamine sessions, maybe you do the whole six ketamine sessions. Like how do, how can people navigate out of intrusive thoughts just in a day-to-day basis? Uh, well, one thing that I, t- I work on teaching a lot of our clients is that, you know, ketamine is a tool. It's a tool for transformation, but there has to be a lot of other tools in your toolbox. Right. Yeah. Um, one tool that I love is EFT, tapping. I don't know if you're familiar with that, emotional freedom technique. So for people who have severe anxiety, OCD, a lot of PTSD with intrusive thoughts, I help them to learn about how to tap about that. Mm-hmm. And um, that's really, to me, is a really tangible thing that people can do that gives, like, provides great, solid results. It's been studied, and it's just it's a wonderful tool. Um, so that's one thing I think that's helpful. Um But then just over the course of taking the ketamine, because ketamine does cause the NMDA receptor antagonism, people end up just having less intrusive thoughts. They're just not there. Right. Like it just, it just happens naturally. Yeah. They just don't, it just stops. Right. So it's like, or what a lot of clients have said to me is that like a thought will come, but they have the awareness now to not identify with the thought. Hmm. Right which is something that like I'm a lifelong meditator and I know you meditate when you meditate for long enough, you become the conscious observer of your thoughts, right? You become the observer of the thought instead of Mm -hmm. the thought itself. Right. And ketamine kind of helps you do that in a way as well, where when an anxious intrusive thought comes in, you can look at it and say, you know, I don't really need to no. Mm -hmm. I don't have to identify with that right now. I don't have to do that. You know, I, I, it's that there's like a pause, right? It's giving you the space, the space to pause in that way to, to look at it and say, "Hmm, no, I'm going to try something different or I'm going to think about something different or I'm going to, you know, and this is in no way implies like anyone can just think their negativity way or think their anxiety way. In no way am I implying that. Um, but it is positive in that regard. It does have that positive benefit that a lot of people do find that they have that awareness, they have the space and they have the capacity to kind of not internalize so much of the anxiety or the anxious thoughts, you know? Yeah. I got to say, I mean, there, there are days where I am so aware, but I'm still such a victim of my, just like my, my pity party, my, my, my feeling, just feeling crappy or 
if I'm having mm-hmm. like eating disorder thoughts or body image thoughts or depression, because depression can really just make you feel like nobody cares, you know, there's no yeah. point. Um, it's isolation yeah. type of feeling, but loneliness. Like, yeah. What you're what you were just describing too, like reminds me of meditation and if you meditate through the discomfort, usually what you feel through the other side is, okay, I'm actually safe in my body. Everything's fine. Maybe I was overthinking. Maybe I was overreacting. Um, and right. like maybe the ketamine, like if you can, if you can think about the safety that you could, that you actually can access in your body I was listening to something and they were saying like, you can access this safety room within your body. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you can remember how you felt on the ketamine, or if if you can kind of just pivot your mind in in any way, like a minuscule way and be like, Mm -hmm. all right, actually I'm safe. This is just a crazy thought. And it's like making my body feel scared or angry or terrified or it's like triggering something because right. the mind I feel like the mind goes so fast and everything mm-hmm. is trigger everything can trigger it it's a sponge for everything and the body is just yeah. like what's going on here you know yeah 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 and I mean I I I feel that myself. I mean, I meditate every morning. I get up and meditate. I get up early and meditate. I have a five-year-old, so I have to get up super, super early so that I meditate like undisturbed. And um, I've meditated for years, but since I've been doing this work, I found it really a lot more important just to carve out the space and time for myself, to Reiki myself, to kind of just give myself that healing. Because, you know, you're holding the space for people all day long can be intense and it can be, um, you know, can be a lot sometimes. Um, and I notice immediately in the days that I don't get to meditate, I notice I'm more reactive. I'm quicker to react. Like, uh, why that person say that to me? Uh, you know, instead of like responding, right. It's like that Buddhist concept of equanimity is like getting to that place where you can, you can just be there mm-hmm. and accept it all and surrender to it all without having to have, an emotional response without having to react. Um, that's a goal for me every day. Me too. Right. For all of us. Uh, it's, and that's the, that's the other beautiful thing about ketamine is that if you're using it mindfully and you're using it as a tool, it can be this, it can be the gateway for people to meditation. Cause a lot of people are so intimidated. And when I, you know, every single client I have, I ask them, have you ever meditated? ask about diet, ask about exercise, ask about meditation. And a lot of them will say, well, I I just can't, I can't silence my mind. You know, I just can't do it. And I tell them like, listen, it doesn't have to be as complex as you think, Mm -hmm. right? You can literally walk outside and have a mindful moment where you appreciate the wind on your face and you look at a beautiful tree and you're just focusing on, I'm just walking and I'm breathing, I'm breathing and I'm bringing your awareness to your breath. Right. And it's like, oh, they're like, oh, really? I didn't know that's considered a meditation. I'm like, yeah, it's just a mindfulness practice. And once you start doing it, you'll get more familiar with it. You'll get more comfortable with it. And then you'll get better with it like anything, you know? Yeah. Um, And so it's just like telling people like who have never been able to like silence their mind or just access this peaceful space. Sometimes the first time they access that is on ketamine. Right. And then they're like, wow this is amazing. And then they feel more inspired. And we, you know, we advocate for that because I try to tell people like the best way to optimize the neuroplasticity that you gain from ketamine is to do all the things that are beneficial for your brain, like exercise in the morning, meditation, uh, breath work, you know, eating foods that are, you know, (laughs) high in omegas, whatever, you know, all the things that we know that are clinically that are good for your brain, that's the time to do them. And so it's just kind of getting people into this comfort zone of feeling like, oh, okay, maybe meditation doesn't have to be so intimidating. Maybe it right. can just feel like, like I'm relaxing and enjoying this music for a couple hours, you know? I mean, yeah. just the music alone really for a lot of people is just, it helps to really support them and keep them kind of in a way focused on just one thing mm-hmm. during the experience. Cause I find that without it, 
then their mind really just goes, you know, tries to go in a hundred different directions. So that was a huge, huge part of of the experience. And the first two experiences I had were very, the music, like, and your playlist is awesome too. Um, Thank you. But the music really just almost like just put a blanket over me and I had my cat next to me who was like basically my sitter. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I, what was I going to say? So what you were saying before with meditation, um, Mm -hmm. people think, oh, I have to, when I go and meditate, it's like, I have to, I have to have my mind be, be still and be clear. And that's what meditation is. But like really in reality, meditation is a practice to sit down with your crazy thoughts with your crazy emotions and to kind of like iron them and just kind of like sift through them and like right. breathe through them because when you end the meditation it sometimes feels like a war like a, a literal mental war um but when you get through it you're like okay i'm calm and when you go out into the real world and you deal with stress and drama and and people's you know just issues with people or whatever you kind of have more like strength and like control over it and this is what i tell mm-hmm. my yoga students too i'm like we're in the yoga room right now doing crazy things with our bodies we're we're holding these postures that feel kind of crazy and we want to get out of it but what you don't realize is that when you get out there into the real world when you deal with stress or craziness or chaos you're going to be like way more way more calm you're going to deal with it in a more like you know level-headed way way. yeah Yeah. absolutely and it's like we don't realize it but like the body just naturally and the mind naturally get strengthened by these practices even though it feels not good This episode is brought to you by Thought Cloud CBD, which is one of the purest CBD companies I'm affiliated with. They are Reiki-infused, vegan, sustainable, and pure, lab-tested, world-renowned CBD, and they have a variety of products from tinctures to topicals and even face masks and facial cleansers that are infused with CBD in them. I've actually been using Thought Cloud CBD products for almost two years now, and I love their tinctures so much. Um, It was one of the first companies that I really got deep into the tincture form of healing, and their tinctures are really nice and light. They have coconut oil in them. They don't have all these crazy flavors with additives and, you know, different types of chemicals that you don't want to be in your CBD. You just want exactly what you are getting. And the reason why you take CBD is to heal. So you don't want any of those junky fillers in there. And CBD is not meant to have that stuff in it. So Thought Cloud is all about healing. And I recommend using their tinctures for anxiety, depression, inflammation, gut health, autoimmune flare-ups, And I also use their CBD Facial Cleanser Bar Soap, the CBD Mud Mask that you guys always see me posting about in my stories. So if you'd like to check out Thought Cloud, you can follow them on Instagram. Just type in Thought Cloud or you can purchase anything off their website, thoughtcloud.net. And you can use discount code GYPSYLOVEFLOW for a discount. And if they're ever having a sale, you can also use my discount code GYPSYLOVEFLOW and that will give you extra money off, even if it's like a 70% crazy sale that they have. Sometimes they have sales during the season. So go ahead, check them out, thoughtcloud.net. Use code GYPSYLOVEFLOW for a discount at checkout. In the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, most challenging things, right? There's always something really beautiful on the other side of them. Yeah. You know, that's like parenthood is one of the most challenging things in the world. And it's also the most beautiful thing in the world. But <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's easy. You know what I mean? If you right. if you care about how you're doing it and you're doing it well, you're going to be triggered and frustrated and, you know, all these things. But it's also really beautiful and one of the best experiences that, you know, you can have for, you know, for a lot of people. So it's, it's 
Yeah, it's just finding like balance. Everything is for me is just like finding balance, right? There's good and bad in all things. There's light and dark in all things. And dark isn't necessarily always as dark as we perceive it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because I have I have had clients who've said like, you know, I, I had a difficult experience. And when I asked them like, what was difficult about it? Oh, it was just like visually dark. And I'm like, well, did you see anything that was like scary or no? And I'm like, well, you know. Hey, dark is the cosmos. The cosmos are beautiful. That's how I, you know, when I have my experience, I just kind of look at it like, oh, if it's visually dark here, this is, this looks like the cosmos to me. Let me travel the cosmos. You know, it's just like putting things in perspective. Like just because something is visually dark doesn't mean it's right. bad. Like, you know, we've been so conditioned to look at things in this binary way of like good versus bad and, you know, light versus dark. And it's like, no, life is a continuum, right. you know, um, I actually had a client um, that I did like a tarot session with um, some months back. And, you know, sometimes I guide them through like a visualization. And she said to me, you know, I can't visualize like I it just doesn't happen for me. And I said, that's fine. You don't have to visualize. You can just feel it in your body. You can you don't have to see anything in your mind, like like pretend it's there and it's not. So for some people, visualization is just like, what? Like, I can't do that. Yeah. So yep. like just closing your eyes and just connecting to your physical body and just yeah. just thinking about things, that is that is a form of visualization, but you're just not seeing things. You're you're right. you're connecting to your body though, which is which is right. the healing. Right. Um, yeah, see, and that brings up another interesting point, because we've also had people who have said, like, well, I didn't see, you know, a lot of people expect, especially people who've done other psychedelics, they expect it to be so intensely visual. Mm -hmm. And I always try to explain to people, like, it's really not that way. And until you get up in really higher doses, then maybe you have a lot of that imagery where like flying through landscapes and all different kinds of stuff. But I always tell people, you're kind of seeing things more in your mind's eye. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you know, so don't, and then they think, well, well, that means I didn't have a psychedelic experience because I didn't see like aliens or whatever. And I'm like, please let go of any expectations of how it should or shouldn't be. Yeah. Just allow it to be, you know, and just absorb whatever comes up for you in in that space. Right. Like, are you here Mm -hmm. to heal your trauma and your depression or are you here to have a psychedelic experience? Right. You know? the intention is definitely different for everybody. And, you know, it's not going to take one ketamine session to heal everything. It also takes work just like, you know, they say yoga off the mat, practice being a good human, not just when you're on the mat, but when you're off the mat, try to try to, you know, so like (laughs) when you're not on ketamine and you're not in like a, a, or a therapy session, try to, you right. Know, just That's the integration component. It's like, how am I going to take this and integrate it into my life? Right. Yeah. Like you have this for some people, they have these moments of, of self-compassion, of self-love. Right. And that in and of itself is so transformational because some people have been waiting their whole life, sometimes 60 years to feel that, to feel any sense of self-love. And, you know, that's the beginning of basically a new life for them. Because, you know, that's where everything starts. When we love ourselves, we can show up for others. We can, you know, it's just like life changes. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really, it's an incredible thing to witness that, you know, it's an incredible thing to witness people who come into the program, maybe initially thinking, I'm just here because I heard ketamine works on depression, Yeah. you know, and they don't really have any idea about what else can happen in this space. And they come out on the other side of it saying like, I have, a, we've had a lot of veterans, you know, I had one veteran who said to me, you know, I don't even know how to describe it, but my PTSD is gone. He's like, and the only way I can describe it is just that somehow I now know that it's all okay and that it, and that I'm forgiven and that everything is fine. He's like, I just know it internally. And like, that's kind of what right. we talked about before. Yeah. So it's like integration is important. Like how do you carry that into your life every day? It's like, oh, self-compassion, forgiveness, 
right? Now I can show up and be more compassionate to others. Now I can forgive others just the same way I've forgiven myself. Now I can show more empathy to others mm-hmm. the same way that I, I've now been able to show it to myself. So yeah, integration yeah, so is like, huge and very important. The word agency comes up for me when you say that. And like, I know that word is kind of like a buzzword right now, but like agency is is kind of like the same as saying, oh, I have power over this. Like, I actually have the choice to choose, do I want to continue to just fall apart every time I get triggered in this way, or do I want to put in the effort, do I want to put in this resilience practice or whatever to to not be right. so dramatically affected by everything, because that's huge. I mean, the self-compassion piece, for me at least, especially with someone... Um, anyone who, who's going through eating disorders or body image stuff, um, mm. self-compassion is like, what? Like, no, I don't like my body. I'm not going to like my body. Don't tell me to like my body. Um, right, right. It's it's like there's so much resistance. And yeah. I think that was actually one of my intentions. I think it was my third session. I've done three so far um, that I just wanted to feel better in my body. It wasn't – it wasn't even trauma based. I was just like, whatever, like whatever I think about, whatever comes up, that's fine. But I just really want to feel better in my body and body image. So that was my intention. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and that's why I always tell people like your intention has to resonate with you. There's no right or wrong about it. Like, don't, don't think that I'm going to, you know, give you a checkoff list. Like, that's okay. That's not, I'm just like, Hey, whatever you feel, you need to work on in this space is what you need to work on. And, yeah. you know, that's fine. And it doesn't matter if it's just literally some people just want to feel like, can I just relax for two hours? Exactly. Yes. I'm like, yes, you can. Cause trust me, if you commit to relaxing for two hours, a whole oh. bunch of other stuff is going to happen for you as well. Your body's just going to thank you so much. And like not every therapy session has to be like this, this intense, you're crying, you're talking about trauma. There's some therapy sessions where I'm just like, I'm just talking to my therapist about stupid shit, whatever. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's an important thing to be said about ketamine in general as a psychedelic is that it doesn't have to be this intense, crazy, like, I feel like I'm going to die. And it was, I was, you know, (laughs) I was battling death for six hours straight. And then I came out of it and I'm alive and I love life now. It's like, that sounds like okay. that sounds like the festival version of ketamine. Right. It's like okay, you know, and that ha- maybe that has its own time and space for certain people, but I think for people who've experienced trauma mm-hmm. particularly, safety obviously is a big thing and maybe your revelation and your your, you know, come to Jesus moment happens through just feeling love. Yeah. Just love in that space, unconditional love that that type of vibration, that source energy. Um, and it doesn't have to be scary. It could be beautiful too. It doesn't have to be, <laughs> you know, you, you hear that a lot, in, especially in like the, you know, psychedelic community and just people who do, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing, as you know, people are just like kind of overdoing it. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> I actually had, all a, things. <laughs> I had, I just recorded an episode. It was like a few episodes back, but it was about, um, dating in the spiritual community and how there's a lot of like plant medicine addicts right there and like it's not like they're yeah. addicted to the plants they're addicted to the experiences they're addicted to these out of body experiences and it's like whoa like it's it's kind of crazy well anything can become an escape from reality mm-hmm. right anything can become an addiction in its own way where we're like addicted to not being present with what is here in this dimensional space like okay I want out of this because this experience is much better. And it's like, then you, you know, that in and of itself is just another exactly. way it's of an escape. Yeah. And it's another way of, you know, self-medicating. Yes. You know, I do, but that's not to say that psychedelics are not powerful tools and wonderful tools for transformation and, right. and consciousness expansion and all of those things. They are, they're beautiful, incredible, especially plant medicine, et cetera. But anything, if you're not using it mindfully, can become a crutch, can become something that may not necessarily be doing you, you know, service. It may be something that's, 
you know, like I said, balance, right? Like everything has to be in balance. In my opinion, I, I think like it doesn't matter what it is. Right. You know, if we need to return to balance every time. And so, you know, even people in our program, I'm like, if they've been on ketamine for a long time, you know, I always discuss with them, like, are you using it mindfully? Like, what are your goals? You know, it's just like, we want to maintain the sense of what are we working towards? Why are we using this every time? What else are we doing for mental health? Are you exercising? You know, how has your diet changed? Have you eliminated? eliminated processed foods have you eliminated you know inflammatory foods um just kind of looking at all the things right instead of placing all the attention on this one thing it's like there's so many things that we can do to feel better right and we never want to put all of the focus on one thing so it's i think that's part of what is a wonderful thing about our program is that it, it is integrative and it does look at all of the factors that contribute to our well-being contribute to wellness it's like our surroundings too it's like okay it's not just the person it's like okay what's your living situation like what's your relationships like right for me like in my recovery not only with like substances and like trauma and my eating disorder but it's basically like if you can heal the relationships in your life and heal just the stability, if you could just feel more stable in your life, then you're probably not going to reach for that drug or that drink as often. You're not going to feel as depressed or anxious if you feel more supported, like just in your life in general. Um, Absolutely. So it's like, it's not your fault for being depressed. It's just kind of like information. It's just energy information Mm -hmm. and like um when we can for me at least when I can kind of take inventory like okay I always journal and even on even in my ketamine sessions I journal or I write in my phone if I have like a thought I like need to put it down just because it's you can you can feel things differently when you're like putting it out of your body and I feel like that's also what ketamine does is it it creates this safe space to just think about things that you haven't been able to think about in a safe, yeah. in a safer way. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and what's interesting about it too, is that you may see some images, you may get some, some messages that don't make sense in the moment. And then, six months later, you're driving in your car and you have like an aha moment, like, oh, that's why I saw that, you know, or whatever, like the integration continues and continues on for days, weeks, months, a year, you know, you continue to find ways to integrate that experience into your life. Um, And I, what I always try to tell people is that healing is nonlinear, you know, it's a process, it's, you know, we have our ups, we have our downs, you know, it's taken your whole life to get to this point. And that's a lot of experiences. That's a lot of trauma or grief or sadness or abuse or whatever it is that's happened Mm -hmm. for most people. That can all be erased overnight, right? To just be patient with people and know that this is a lifelong process. This is what we're here for. We're here to do the work. The work never ends. We just keep... Right hopefully getting better at it, getting more resilient as we go. It's like, it's like the 10 steps forward, five steps back, 10 steps forward, five steps back. It's like recovery in any sense, whether it's drugs, alcohol, trauma, um, eating disorders, it's, it's, you're going to have these months or these weeks where it's like, wow, I'm, I'm really feeling good. Yeah. Or you're going to have a week where it's just like shit has hit the fan. You're oh, like, God, yeah. has, have I fully relapsed? What's happening? But it's, oh, like, yeah. it's yeah. like that contrast because when, when I come out of a really crazy week, like last week was really crazy for me, I can say, okay, actually I'm doing these things that are helping. You know, I'm not as bad as I used to be in this way. It's like just mm-hmm. kind of like taking that inventory. It's like – yeah it's recovery is going to, you're going to have divots, you're going to have lows, you're going to have highs. And it's kind of like the whole goal of like 
treatment and ketamine and going to therapy and maybe trying medication is to be able to just kind of like ride the wave with like less fight, like less resistance, like right. and be able to just experience joy. Even if life is kind of shitty, like you should still be able to feel joy. You should still be able to, to, to have happy moments. Right. Right. I mean, part of our struggle as humans is just comes from us not being able to accept things <laughs> to be able to accept what is right. This sucks right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And so sometimes for me, when that happens and I find myself like, like one thing after the other, after the other, I'm like, God, can I get a break? And then I realize, like, no, there's no break. Right. <laughs> this is life. <laughs> right. Like there's no break. The, the break comes when you realize that there's no break and you keep going, you know, you, 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 you got to flow with it. You know, it's like, can you remain fluid? Can you re can you, can you let these things just kind of flow around you and off you? And instead of reacting every time you can kind of navigate your way through it in a more fluid way, that's where the work comes in. And the work is, you know, and people think like, Oh, you meditate all the time. Or like, Oh, you're so Zen and you're so relaxed. I bet you never get upset. And I'm like, ha, huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You know, like, are you kidding? I get triggered just like the best of them. I, I, you know, yeah, I get angry. I, you name it. Yeah. It's just, and, and I allow that to be what it is. Like if I'm having a sad moment, I just allow it just like, okay, I'm sad right now, but this is temporary. Right. It's not going to last forever. You know, it could be worse too. I feel like when I'm in those pity party, life sucks. Oh my God. It's one thing after another. Fuck. Um, I'm just like, okay, I live in a nice apartment. Thank God. Yeah. That's nice. I yeah. I teach yoga. I have I have a job. Okay, my right. family's healthy. Like the other day, I was having a really bad day, and I was just like, okay, what can I thank God for or spirit because I'm feeling mm -hmm. so shitty, and it's like I'm mm. tired of being in this like pity party sometimes. So I just prayed and I said, thank you God, thank you spirit for my family being healthy and safe. Literally, yeah. Like it's yeah. just. Gratitude always shifts the energy. Gratitude is one of the best practices that we can have. I usually tell a lot of the clients to start a gratitude journal mm -hmm. every day. Just wake up every day and write down three things that you're grateful for. I don't care if it's just coffee and a piece of bread, a toast and, you know, your dog, whatever. Every day, just write down the three. And that immediately changes it for all of us. I do the same that you do. When I when I'm get when I'm in my pity party, I'm just like, really you're complaining? Like look at the look, well, look at your life, right? You right. know, it's just like, of course. I mean, it's part of, you know, it's not to discredit and and to dismiss what we feel cuz that the self-compassion is important. Like, oh, I do feel I'm sad right now. Like it's okay to be sad. Um but it's just also shifting that energy from like getting into the victim state right. where you're like this very identified as, you know, why do these things keep happening to me? And mm -hmm. This person did this to me. You, you can really go down a rabbit hole with that. And, and then shifting when you shift it to gratitude, that that changes everything. It's like, oh, actually, thank you for showing me who you really are. Yeah. Now I know I don't have to F with you anymore or be with, you, you know, whatever. Like, they, yeah. Thanks for showing me who you are. Now I know better, you know, I'm grateful. Thanks a lot. Yeah. The, uh, just trying to find that, like that anchor of like, is it as bad as, as I think it is? Or is, is my mind going to all these cognitive crazy distortions of like worst case scenario and right. So right. It's, you know, that's cognitive distortions. I actually did an episode about it where I like, I like read through like all the cognitive distortions for people, which is like black and white thinking, worst case scenario, blah, blah, blah. So I'll link that in the show notes. But um, cool. Kate, um, is there anything that you would like to kind of leave the listeners with as far as people who are really struggling right now with depression, anxiety, or intrusive thoughts that, that are linked to trauma? Like, you know, obviously I'm going to put everything in the show notes if they want to try my ketamine home. You guys mm -hmm. can, um, when you, when you sign up, you, you do like a little online 
quiz, and then you can have an over-the-phone kind of interview co- consultation. You can mention my name, Gab, and they will give you a discount. But <laughs> um, for any of the listeners who are just struggling, what what can you leave them with? Um, that there is another way and that um, maybe you just don't have to struggle so much always. Maybe healing is possible for you and that you deserve to feel joy. You deserve to feel better. You deserve to, to have happy moments and to not feel numb and disconnected and lonely and withdrawn. You deserve healing and that healing is possible. Um, and that we're here to support you every step of that journey towards wellness and that journey towards wholeness. And, um, you know, because we believe in it, we do believe that it can be so like we genuinely, all of us in this company genuinely believe in, in how transformational ketamine can be for people. And that's what I would leave them with that there is another, there's other possibilities out there. You know, I'm not trying to sell it as a miracle cure or anything like that. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's, it's very effective. It really is. And another experience is possible. And are are you ready for a different experience? Yeah. And any type of healing, I'm just going to say any kind of healing, any kind of recovery does require some kind of change and act like an action, you know? Right. Right. So I, I, d- I definitely, what I do is I commend everybody. I'm like, wow, you know, throughout the process, I'm like, I'm so proud of you for showing up for yourself in this way. Yeah. Look what you're doing for yourself to heal. Like maybe no one else in their life has ever given them any, you know, positive support or love in that way. And it's just like, hey, look what you're doing for yourself. I'm so proud of you. Even small progress, like someone will say, well, I woke up for the first time that's not small, but somebody said to me recently, I woke up for the first time in 20 years without anxiety. Wow. You know, it's like, it's still there in the background, but it's not like this heavy, intense, like pressing on my chest type of anxiety. And I'm just like, that is incredible. Yeah. You know, I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. And I can't wait to see, you know, if that's after one dose, I can't wait to see how you're going to feel after six doses, you know? Right. So. Amazing. So. We'll have to have you back on so that we can talk about more of like energy healing, Reiki, because I know that you do way more than just um, kind of the ketam- my ketamine home and you are just so, like a wealth of mm-hmm. like energy healing knowledge. And you actually sent me Reiki <laughs> um, on my first I did. session. You were like, hey, just, just text me before your session so I can send you some Reiki. And I was like, oh my God, I love this woman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And you know, the offer still stands. I'd love to give you Reiki in person. Um, that's how I got started uh, in this job. Actually, we used to do infusions in the office and I would do a lot of Reiki and energy work on people. Yes. While they were getting the infusion, which was a beautiful thing to be a part of. And I, I'm very grateful for this job, for the ability to show up and serve, you know, serve humanity and extend my compassion and my love for people. Yes. Um, and just so that they know that they're not alone, that we all have struggles and that being vulnerable is is OK and being sensitive is OK. And it's it's a strength and that it's it's okay to heal. And we're here yeah. for you um, throughout that journey. Being vulnerable is going to help um, you heal. Yeah. There's, there's so much strength in vulnerability, which people don't realize. You know, our culture tends to to shun that, to view it as you know, like sensitivity is weakness, but it's actually the reverse, you know. Totally. Um, there's so much strength to be to be. To, to come out of being vulnerable and being authentic about how you feel and about what you've been through and to know that in doing so, you can release a lot of that. You can transform it. You can transmute it. You can, right. you can change. Change is possible and healthy. Yes. Even if you've and, been struggling for decades or, you know, 10 years, 17 years, whatever, like oh, yeah. you can you can change. It's not an overnight process, but um, 
Yes. Yeah. If you are thinking about wanting to try ketamine and you want to use my ketamine home, if you live in Florida, Texas, California, is there another yeah, state? Yeah, actually, we're going to be expanding to many states. We were actually recently um, absorbed by a, a company called New Life Health. So we're super excited about that. It's going to be um, a comprehensive wellness, mental, integrative mental health um, company. And we're going to continue to expand to many other states, Amazing. to Colorado, to Washington. We, you know, we intend on being in many different states and just continuing to provide a high level of, of compassionate care, but with a focus on um, integrative mental health and, you know, functional medicine. So, right. Yeah. It's a full, full rounded approach. It's not just ketamine, you know. Right. It's a, it's a 360 approach. Right. It's a 360 approach to really just encompass everything because um, that's how people do best. That's what I've seen, you know, just with my own eyes in this program. It's like the people who really absorb this idea of, okay, now that I feel better, I'm going to move my body. Now that I feel better, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to make different choices. I'm not, you know, not going to drink five sodas per day. I'm maybe only going to have one soda per day. You know, these right, little simple, right. simple changes, habit changes that are positive make a profound difference for people. Yes. They feel better. They have more energy. They're less inflamed. They have less migraines. They have less, you know, physical pain and all these other things. They only compound that feeling of, of sadness and isolation because it becomes like a circle. Like you don't feel good. You don't have energy. So then you don't get up to move and then you don't move. So you don't feel bad. You don't right. feel good. You know, it's like cycle. It becomes, yeah. Yeah. So we're really focused on just looking at the whole person, treating the whole person. Small changes lead to big, big shifts. Absolutely. Yes. And for everyone who's listening, every little small thing you're doing matters. Yes. It's not a competition. It's not a race. No one, what anyone else is doing has nothing, no bearing on what you're doing. You know, you focus on yourself and any little small changes you make per day, even if that just means being kinder to yourself, that's a huge thing. Huge. Yeah. Huge thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, I send love to all of your listeners and I'm so grateful that you had me on of course and uh and we will meet in person I can't wait yeah we have to I have to give you a big hug (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much for being on the podcast Kate I'm sure everybody Mm -hmm. will um they they can find you I'll put your information in the show notes and my ketamine home and uh, we hope that this episode helped you guys in any way even if it's minuscule because like I said small changes lead to big big shifts so thank you so much kate for coming on the podcast thank you thank you so grateful but how can i transform resistance release that struggle and harm into calm energy Something out of nothing, nothing at all. You will hear me sing from the skies above. Ah, check it. All I have is love, so I let it out, dancing to the sun, until the stars come out, I don't care how it looks, or how it sounds, I'll come eyes that pain, I got a brand new brain. Got a brand new brain Got a brand new brain I got a brand new brain
Don't mind me, just sneaking out to go to Kohl's. The home deals right now, they're too good to pass up. Like up to 40% off Cuddle Dead's bedding, up to 50% off the cutest fall decor, and up to 25% off Ninja Kitchen appliances. How can I resist? You can even get 15% off or 15, 20, or 30% off with a Kohl's card. So, yeah, I'm going all in for fall, and I can't even wait. Select styles. Offers end October 17th. Some exclusions apply. See store or Kohl's account for details.